people out in YouTube land, I promised a subscriber probably a couple of weeks ago that I would do a tutorial on how to do these starry night time lapses. And so I'm in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm going to give you a preview of what we're going to see here, but then I'm going to go show you how to set it up on your GoPro Hero 4 camera before we start anything else. But this is a, a, like a full, we're not seeing the full size of it. If I, I'm over here, it says fit. If I go to 100%, you'll see just how many stars we're seeing in the sky here, uh, a bunch. And I'm going to kind of pull across it. You can see that it does the little spinny thing here. You can see Polaris is down here right at the very bottom. and It's not moving. Uh, or at least it moves just a tiny little bit, doesn't it? So I'm going to go back out to 100%, or excuse me, fit. But so this is this is what your end result's going to be. I'm realizing this is Snagit that's capturing this. It's only going to be 10 frames a second. This one's actually 24 frames per second. So you can see there how everything rotates really nice. And a few clouds come in. This is where there's a street light at a local church. And you can barely see this light, really, in, except when you're doing these long exposures. And so it glows. I'm going to go up to my brother's house, which is totally dark. I'm going to try to get the Milky Way galaxy. This is, this is shooting north, shooting in the wrong direction to actually see our, our galaxy. But I'm going to do a longer exposure. But there you go. That's what that's what our end result is going to be. Yeah, there you can see Polaris really good here. Watch how everything rotates around it. There's the North Star. Okay, so I shot this one last night. I shot another one weeks ago. This one was actually 30-second exposures with the Hero 4. Uh, at one shot every minute, a 30-second exposure is what I did. So I'm going to take a break here from this video, and I'm going to show you how I set up the camera, and then I'm going to come back and show you how I do this in Adobe Premiere. Here we can see I've got my GoPro on. I'm zoomed in pretty tight. Uh, you got different modes, right? You can go in. You got your, you, when it comes up, typically it's in video. So right there's what you're usually going to get. You see here I shoot a lot in 1080p 40, 48. But I'm going to click this button here with my thumb again. I'm going to go to not shot. And this is the multi-shot mode. I'm in the third one, you know. So I'll do it, go through that again just for those of you who are brand new to, to GoPro. That's, that's your video. Here's going to be your photo. And I've got it set in night photo as well. Then your third one you click on is going to be your multi-shot. Trying to hold this at an angle so you can see the co contrast pretty good. And you click this little button over here on this side to go into the edit. You can see I've got night lapse. There are if you click the top button, you can see the different ones you've got. You got burst. It might come open and burst. Uh, uh, you got time lapse here if you're on just a regular day time lapse. Then you got your night lapse, and that's what I like to use. And I've got it set to uh, this next parameter here. I hit this with my thumb. Uh, 60 seconds. I was last night shooting 60 second. Uh, in other words, one shot every 60 seconds. And yeah, I use 12 megapixel wide. You have different, you know, darn it, back in there again. Uh, you have different of those you can do too, seven megapixel instead of five. But you want the biggest one. Naturally, up here where the 60 was, you could have done a two minute time lapse or a one minute. and you know, once it, you can change it how often it shoots the pictures. I like to see it once every 60 seconds. That's just me. Spot metering, I left it off. Protein, I, let, I turned it on so I could get just, you know, the highest quality. And my shutter speed down here, 30 seconds. That's what I set. Now you can, you can uh, again, click it on the top. You can see you got different one, 10 seconds or 15 seconds or 20 seconds. 10, 30 seconds, you're going to get a little bit of star shift there as the world moves a little bit. You'll see some slight bit of trail on the star but it's not that bad color i left that color temperature the 5500 was fine gopro color is fine high resolution that's your that's your resolution you want that to, you know to be your sharpness to be very sharp and that's really all i did i can exit out of that and that's how i do mine i go out and i set it and i let it record you can see I'll do a whole lot of pictures here 9,999, but the battery runs out before that happens. So I'm, uh, I'm hopefully going to be in receipt of some batteries that get even longer life than what the GoPro original battery gets, but that's how I set up the camera. Okay, so we're back from looking at the camera, and you see I have a sequence here, an image sequence. It just says JPEG like it's a picture on it, but the way you do this um, in Adobe Premiere Pro is you just go in here and you can double click in this area if you want to, and it, it does import, or you can right click. You can say import. There's different ways. You can go up here and file, and you can say, uh, well, I, I never do this. Well, this, you can do import right here, or you can do a control I. 
Easiest way for me in Premiere is always just double click in here. And you see here, this is my folder called Starry Night Tutorial. And here, these are just some Premiere Pro auto saves and stuff that, that have been put in here. Here's my project. But here's where I put the photos, right? If you've not done an image sequence in Premiere Pro before, it's super easy. You just double click on the folder. And, it, it, you know, I thought that I was going to have to import all these, like Control A and do that. You don't have to do that. What, the way you do this typically in Premiere is you just click the first, as long as you've got them all in sequence here, right? They're all one number after the other, 607, 608, 609. Uh, you, you click on the first picture and it says image sequence, right? So you clicked on uh, you clicked on the image sequence and you say open. And boom, it's going to pull it back open again. So I've got the same sequence in there twice now. I'm going to just delete that one because it's the same, very same thing I have. So what you look at here, the way I do this, is you got to decide how you're going to output this, right? So it's going to come in as $29.97. As, as I don't know why, maybe it just defaults to do that. But if you hold over this, you can see... Uh, just hover your arrow over it, that it's 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. You can also see that if you pull this out here somewhere or another, it'll tell you. It goes way on out and tell There you go, 4,000 by 3,000 pixels and all this. Now you can see here, I've brought in some, I've created some sequences. Here's a 1920 by 1081. Here's a 40, uh, nine, excuse me, 4096 by 2304. This is a red sequence i'll show you let me just give you a little example i've done those of you've done this before i don't want to bore you uh but those for those i haven't this is some interesting little technical tidbits so i have three sequences here because you know you might choose different ways to deliver this video the standard way a lot of people still do if they want to see it on a blu-ray disc or um just like maybe on youtube or something youtube still 1080p really rules youtube for now this is october of 2014 I'd say 4K is coming coming on strong, but so this is a uh, what I did. I said I said uh, well, once again, I can go in right click. I can say new sequence. This is the way I typically do it. Or you can go say file new sequence, and you pick different sequence styles. I'm going to go to AVC HD, and even though this is a 2997, I I would like to do this at 24 frames per second because <clears throat> I'm going to try to even slow it down a little bit. It comes in kind of fast. It's only four seconds long. So I'm going to go to 1080p, I'm going to do a, a, a 1080p 24, and we call it sequence 5, we could call this uh, 24 1080p, okay, we'll say okay, boom, I did 2254, my bad, we'll, we'll get rid of that 5, that sucks, there we go, now, now we're back to right. So now I can pull the sequence onto this, and I can either tell it to change the sequence, in which case it'll convert it to 4,000 by 3,000, but I'm gonna say, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna say, keep existing settings. And I might actually go here and right click on this and say speed duration. I can make it a little slower if I want to, like maybe 80%, because I do have a few more <clears throat> frames since it's 2997 than 24. Your eye's not gonna actually even recognize this. So you see here now I've got, I, uh, I've got my image sequence right. I'm going to do a little quick check here and make sure I'm doing the wrong thing. Let's see, yeah, I'm doing the right thing. I'm going to do a little quick check here and see if my playback resolution is full. It is. Okay, I want this way we can kind of preview this. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to hit the tilde key. That's the one right above your tab key and below your escape key, upper left hand of your keyboard. And now I can see, you know, kind of what I've got here. And I can look at these. I can rotate this. I can see the actual time if I want to click on it and watch how it's doing. Now, naturally, we're not seeing all of the screen, right? We have brought a uh, a 4,000 pixel wide image into a 1920 wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to size this down, probably. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go to the motion up here and twirl this down. And here at scale, I can pull, I can twirl this little thing here down like that. See, so just click on it. And then I can pick to go, I can sh shrink this down. So now you can see some of my trees and stuff. You can see kind of the boundaries of it. Looks like that's going to be about what I might want. And you know, I don't want to see as many of the trees. So I'm going to kind of, what you do, I'm, I'm just getting over this. And I'm dragging left, or even dragging right to go down. Now I see more of the skies. I can see a little bit more of the tree line. I can tilt back, I click on this window again, and hit the tilt key again. I can preview this, kind of what it's going to look like. So that's kind of nice. You get to see a little bit of the trees, not so much of that glow in the bottom. And here I've got my starry night uh, 
you know, now I hate when it does this big magenta thing at the end here in Premiere. I don't know why they've made it where it does that. But it does. It just shows you the end of the sequence. But there you go. It's right pretty. I'm going to control save that. And I'm going to tilt again. Hit the tilt key to get back out. So let's say, okay, well, I'm still only seeing, there's still a whole lot more stars up here because this is a, this is a pretty tall image. I had to shrink it down. Let's say I want to go with one of the larger sizes. I want to go with red, maybe. And I'll tell you why I'm, why I'm picking red. I'm going to do it, a new sequence. I'm going to do, do a sequence this time. The red sequences are pretty cool because they're, most of them are 16, 9. We're going to hear red RD3. You can go down to 4K because this is 4K image we've got. It's, for, it's uh, 4,000 pixels wide. Now, the red, I'm going to pick a 16, uh, 9, 24. And so you can see here it's going to be 4096 by 2304. And that is a that is a 16 by 9 uh 16 by 9 progressive scan setup. 16 nines which you're used to seeing. It's it's this size back here, which is wide. And I'm gonna go ahead and say uh red red 4k. Now this is just a tiny bit wider, right, than what we got. So we can actually blow up about maybe two or three percent if we want to. And it's not gonna make any big difference with your sequence. I'm gonna say okay. So now I've got a red sequence, I'm gonna pull this into it. I'm gonna tell it once again, keep existing settings, right? I want that. I want that 16.9, and I want it to be. Uh, so I want it to be 24 frames per second. I'm probably gonna slow this one down again a little bit too. Uh, so I'm right click on it to do that, and I'm gonna say speed duration. I'll say 80 80 percent again. That'll be that'll work just fine. And I'm gonna say uh, now once again, I, I've got more sky above here because this is only like what is this? If I click on the sequence, the red, we can see it's only 2304, but I got 3,000 pixels. If I want to get a little less of this tree line, I can once again click on this, go to motion, go just to, uh, well, position is what I really want to do on this one. Actually, scale, I could go to maybe 105. Uh, maybe less than that. 102. That should be getting all the, any little edges that were, uh, the extra pixels that we didn't have. That should cover that. And now maybe I want to show a little more of the sky and a little less of the tree line. And there we go. Now I got a 16.9, which we're used to seeing, not a 4.3. Because this is, since I click on this and you see, since it's 4,000 by 3,000, well, naturally it is a 4.3 aspect, which is like what you see on the old televisions when they usually have bars on either side of them that are black. And since we're used to seeing 16.9, that's why I've picked this red, because it gives us right quick a 16.9 that we can put out on YouTube or whatever, or, or you know, if you've got a 4K TV and you want to see it, this is probably the pixel aspect you'll have on your 4K TV. And now if we tilt into this, uh, we'll be able to see now that's that's the whole thing in 4K, even though I'm only recording it at 1080p. And it's spectacular. It looks really great. I click that. So this is 30, uh, 30 second exposures for the stars. And so you really can see a lot of stars. If we go again in here and do... Um, you know, 100%, you'll be able to see there's, there's quite a few stars you're seeing in there. It, 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 it picks them up pretty nicely. There is a little bit of shift. If, if, you're, if you're on for 30 seconds, you know, then you're going to get a tiny little bit of shift, right? Because the Earth is still spinning for that 30 seconds. So you're not getting the real precise points you get if you did maybe 15 seconds. But you're also getting a lot more stars. Uh, it's like, almost like another Little Dipper, isn't it, that's up there. Of course, we know that Polaris is the tail of the real Little Dipper. A I, I'm, I'm fascinated when I look at these. I'm going to do a tilt key and get back out again. So then the last thing you might choose to do is just do a full-size one, right? So I'm going to do New, Sequence. And ultimately, this doesn't matter. I'm going to call this 4.3. And the reason I say this doesn't matter is I'm going to let the... Uh, this time, I'm going to let this thing dictate what's going to go. I'm going to pull down here. I'm going to say go ahead and change the sequence settings. And now if we look at the 4.3 one, we'll see that it, it is a sequence that's 4,000 by 3,000. And let's see, now we're seeing, oh, we're seeing 100% we need to do a fit. And now we're seeing the whole shooting match, which is what I showed you at the very beginning. I'll do a tilde into this. 
and now you'll be able to see the whole everything in four three aspects so it's not the 16 9 where you got the extra on the side over here but this is everything that was shot and it's shrunk down so that it fits i'll hit play and that in real time at 2997 is what you see and once again this looks a lot better when you're not looking at it with snag it and you're recording it to uh, uh, you know, at a higher frame rate. But there you go, 10 frames per second is what you're seeing here. And boy, it's pretty. So I'm going to go and aim kind of more to the south tonight in a much darker place, and we'll see how many more stars we can get. But that's how I do these uh, starry night time lapses, folks. Hope that helps. If you have any questions, please send them on. Subscribe if you like. Always great to have more subscribers and friends out in the YouTube world. Peace to all.